Yeah. Hi guys, my name is Chandu. I have total around 14 years of experience in uh, total DevOps and uh, infrastructure level and cloud related activities. And currently I'm working as a trainer from last six years in Visual Path. And uh, I'm currently working in one of the MNC as a DevOps engineer over there. So now let's see what is the use of the DevOps engineer and why we need to go as a DevOps engineer in a software industry. First, you need to understand what is the role of the DevOps engineer, why we need to learn the DevOps engineer and how it will be in the market in coming years. That is most important because if you go for Java testing, so many members are learning Java, so many members are going to learn testing and all. But what is the benefit you are going to get if you go with the DevOps engineer? Right. So first, let's understand what is meant by DevOps. Does anyone know what is meant by DevOps? Does anyone know what is meant by DevOps? You can tell me whatever you know. Development and anyone. operation. Development? And operations. Operations. See here. Let me put it here. It's merging of two things like uh, DevOps and operations. DevOps, the name itself, it is indicating that it is plus operations. Okay, the name itself, it is indicating that DevOps is nothing but development plus operations. Keep in mind that DevOps is not a technology. It is a kind of process. It is a kind of process. It is not a technology like Java, or C, or C++. It is a kind of process. Here, let's take one example. Let's take one example. Suppose I have one project. Let us assume that I'm going to implement IRCTC. I got this project. So I'm going to have some development team in office. And I'm going to have the test team in office. What is the use of the development team in real time? What developers are going to do in software industry? What is the role they of the development? Application? They will develop the application. They are going to develop the application by using any one of the technology. Right? Any one of the technology. Either that is Java or C or C. Right? Suppose let us assume that they are going to develop by using Java as a programming language. Suppose for IRCTC, I have recruited four people for the development purpose. That means total, I'm going to have a four developers. What is the responsibility of these four developers? They need to write down the code by using Java language in order to implement IRCTC application. Right. The developer's responsibility is to write down the Java code in order to implement IRCTC application. Suppose let us assume that developer one is going to write down some PI files. I did. Developer two is going to write down some two files. Now three is going to implement some three files in order to implement IRCTC application. Suppose for developer four, he is going to write down some PI files. Total, how many files are there? 15 files are there. Who implemented this? These four developers has implemented 15 files. Tell me one thing. Who will take care of these 15 files in order to deliver to the test team, in order to test the application? Test team responsibility is to test the behavior or functionality of an application. In order to test these they need these all 15 files right developers they are going to write down the java code in order to implement diacity's application we have four developers and they all together implemented 15 files and we need to give those 15 files to the test team so that test team can test the functionality of an application 
not the java code because testing team doesn't know about the java programming so they are not going to test your java files they are going to test the functional of an application but how to give these 15 files to the testing because we have four different developers they implemented 15 files how to share these 15 files to the testing team any idea guys i need active participate from all of you through, through dropbox uh, access file sharing access okay file sharing area. access okay that is one option what else file sharing is the one through. option and what else we can share through github cloud cloud you can share through network cloud okay that is one option i will tell you in simple terms all we are yeah. using google drive am i right or wrong all we are using google drive right if yeah. i want to yeah. share a file to you i am going to upload in a google drive and i can give the access so that you can download the file and you can make use of it that is one kind of option that we are going to use regularly right the same way suppose if i put all these files in a shared location suppose let us assume that i am going to put like this slash slash ibm slash data slash irctc slash code like this i am going to have one shared location keep in mind that this is going to create by the network team and everyone can have an access this way they can access like this they can access ibm data like this they can access okay so if i put all these 15 files in this location testing team can take those 15 files and they can do the testing but suppose let us assume that if i place 15 files here i'm going to place 15 files somebody has deleted the file over there then that scenario who is going to monitor that kind of scenarios somebody has edited my file not intentionally but by mistake somebody has deleted somebody has rewrite the data somebody has added more files do you have a control over there actually you have a proper tracking over here who deleted what content he deleted which lines he deleted which statement he modified those kind of monitoring is not available if you put the files in the shared location that's the reason we are going to have some tools in the real time market what are those tools? GitHub. What are those? GitHub. GitHub. It is the one tool. PVCS is the one tool. TFS is the one tool. Like this, we are going to have 15, 25 plus version control tools are available in the market. Version uh, control. Can, the name itself, it is indicated. So can you, can you come to the last point, please? Why we are... Uh, I mean, uh, the last point. Why we are uh, why, not why we are going for version control, right? Yeah, yeah. Version and uh, see, I mean the, the Git, the all the tools you said, right? Why we are yeah. See here, if I have a four developers, if they develop fifteen files, if they want to share those files to the testing team, they put those files in the shared location. Suppose let us assume that I placed fifteen files and I gave it to you. You are a tester. But somebody has opened the shared location and he deleted some files. Are you in a position to identify that which files were deleted? No. Who deleted those files? No. Suppose somebody has modified the data. Do you have a proper track like who modified the data? Which data he modified? When he was updated those files? those kind of monitoring is not at all possible in the shared location concept in order to eliminate those kind of scenarios we do have a, some proper version control tools available in the market okay cvs is the one version control tool svn is the one version control tool git pvcs tfs like this clear case like that we do have a 25 plus version control tools are available in the market because this is a tool it is going to store your data in simple terms assume that it is going to act like your google drive mm -hmm. okay it is a common version control tool here is a place where you can store your data 
it will give a proper information like who modified the data which data he modified when he added a file who added the file at what time what is the content he modified when it was deleted all those kind of monitoring is possible in the version control tool but here the question is that who is going to maintain this version control tool developer will take the responsibility to maintain this version control tool like installation of the version control tool and maintaining this version control tool no because developer job is to write down the java code if you ask developer one stating that boss install version control tool and maintain version control tool, then he is going to tell that no my time i am going to invest in writing the java files so because i am a developer but who will take the responsibility can we ask testing team stating that boss go on install version control tool and maintain the version control tool no because testing team responsibility is to test the functionality of an application they are not responsible to maintain the version control tool then who needs to take care of this version control tool operations teams that is the ops team the ops team able to understand or not the ops engineer responsibility is to install version control tool and maintain version control tool the ops engineer responsibility is to install version control tool and maintain version control tool i am a devops engineer i am going to install version control tool and i am going to tell to the developers stating that boss whenever you done with your work upload all your files into the version control tool let us assume that they uploaded these all 15 files into the version control tool okay let us assume that everyone has uploaded the files into the version control tool after that what we need to do as a devops engineer what i am going to do is the ops engineer responsibility is to download the files from git i will go in the what is the benefit of git what is the disadvantage with other version control tools those who are going to see in the regular class why nowadays everybody is trying to learn git rather than svn or cbs that will go in deep in regular class okay for time being just remember that git is a version control tool that is going to be maintained by the devops once the files were download once the files were uploaded into the version control tool what devops engineer is going to do i am going to download the files after that i am going to compile the files after that i am going to create as a package package is nothing but either i can create a tar file or i can create a jar file or i can create a var file it all depends on your project it all depends on your application you no need to worry you are not in a position to decide what is the output of the application you no need to worry this is going to be decided by somebody else okay our responsibility is the option and responsibility is to download the files from git compile the java files compile the java files and create the package i have a and doubt sir Hello. Just a second. Just a second. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. These all the things is going to be maintained by the DevOps team. Download the files from the version control tool, compile the Java files, create a package. But if you want to perform these all activities manually, it is very difficult. I am not in a position to do this on regular basis. If it is one time, that's okay. But it is very difficult to do manual stuff every day. Now to eliminate that approach, we do have one more tool that is called build tool. What are the build tools are available in the market? Ant is one build tool. Maven is one build tool. Gradle is one build tool. Ant is one build tool. MS Build is one build tool. Okay. This is a build tool. here we are going to write down the code it is just like html tags or xml files that's it if it is and we are going to write down build.xml file if it is maven you are going to write down form.xml file in build.xml file you are going to have some html tags there we are going to write down the script in order to download the files in order to compile the java files in order to create a package 
whenever doubting me stating that we are done with our work my responsibility is just to go and call build.xml file build.xml file i already write down a script in order to download the files in order to create a package whenever i got a build request from the doubt team stating that boss i am done you to work just create a package and give that to the testing team at that time i just i am going to call my build.xml my build XML file will take care of downloading the files, compiling the Java files, create a package. Because I have already write down a script in the build XML file. It is just like HTML and XML tags only. It is very, very simple. No need to worry. Able to understand or not? I am not performing everything as a manual task. That's the reason I introduced one more tool that is called build tool. Here I already write down a script. Whenever I got a build request, I am just going and calling this build XML file. How you are going and calling build XML file? Just I am going to open the command prompt and I will go to the location of the build XML file and I am going to call the build XML file. That's it. That is my responsibility. So now, so far, how many tools were introduced by the DevOps engineer? Version control tool. That is one. Next one is a build tool. Let us assume that I am going to office at 9:30 every day morning and I am going to leave by 6:30. But doubt team is saying that, boss, we do have a build today. Don't leave the office by 6.30. We still have some more work to write down some Java code. So once I am done with your work, I am going to upload the code into the version control tool. So please be wait till 8 p.m. Once I am done with my work, I will send one request to you to do a build. At that time, till 8 o'clock, I need to stay in the office. Once doubt team is done with their work, once they upload the code into the version control tool, I am going to call my build.xml file in order to create a package so that I am going to give that var file or a tar file to the testing team so that they can go and do the testing. If it is one day, that's fine to stay long time in office. But every day, they are going to send the build request at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the evening time. Able to understand or not? If it is before 6.30, that's fine. But I can't go to manager and tell like, boss, I'm going, I'm leaving every day at 8 or 9 o'clock so I can come by late. No. Managers will bother when you are coming to the office. They are not at all bother when you are leaving the office. That is the regular practice in MNCs also. So in order to eliminate those kind of scenarios, what we need to do? And that too, you are just staying in the office till 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock. In order to call your build.xml file, once the development team was uploaded the files into the version control tool. Because you need to create a package and you need to give that package to the testing team so that they can test the functionality of an application. In order to give the package, you need to call your build.xml file. But when you are going to trigger, once the development team was done with their work, but when they are finishing, who don't have a proper timing sometimes they are finishing before 6 30 sometimes it is at 7 30 sometimes 8 30 sometimes 9 30. so very difficult in order to estimate the time when you are going to get the build request and that too you are just staying in the office just to call your build xml file only rest of the time you are ideal you are not doing anything in order to eliminate that process what devops engineer is going to do is Instead of doing manually, let's introduce one more tool that will take care of calling the build.xml file. What is the tool? Jenkins. Continuous integration tool. What are the continuous integration tools are available in the market? Jenkins. Jenkins. Hudson. Team city like this, would you have so many version? Con uh, sorry, continuous integration tools are available in the market. I'm going to introduce Jenkins. What Jenkins is going to do? I'm going to schedule a time in the Jenkins, or else I'm going to configure in such a fashion that whenever the development team was uploaded the files, your Jenkins is capable to go and trigger your build.xml file. Jenkins is just like a controller. You need to give the instructions 
you need to create a instruction to a jenkins so that once i gave the configurations to the jenkins stating that was whenever the file was uploaded into the git you just go and call the builder xml file create a package you are not doing that activity who is doing jenkins but you should be in a position to configure those settings in the jenkins once you set the configurations in the jenkins you no need to be in the office suppose you leave the office by 6 30 7 o'clock somebody has uploaded the file into the version control tool. jenkins is an intelligent to identify that one and to trigger your build.xml file at the end it will create a package whatever the action you want to do you just intimate to the jenkins you just configure in jenkins it will take care of it jenkins will act as a controller all what you need to do is you should be in a position how you are going to use the jenkins you do have multiple options but for demo purpose i am just giving one real time scenario i am going to teach the jenkins in deep when you have a regular classes at the time you are going to know what all the features are available in the jenkins what all the activities you are going to do in actual real time projects just for understanding purpose i gave one example like triggering the build XML file not only that it will do lot of activities for us suppose let us assume that once the var file was created i need to get notified because i am i went to uh, i went to home after 6 30 but i don't know what happened whether the build was trigger or not whether is it success or not i want to be get notified i need an email then just go on intimate to the jenkins stating that boss i want an email just go on configure in the jenkins so that once the build was ready once it was created the package it is going to send an email to you it's all about how you are going to use the jenkins that is the purpose of the Jenkins. Who is going to introduce the Jenkins? Dow team or DevOps team or testing team? Whose responsibility to maintain the Jenkins? DevOps team. DevOps. DevOps engineer responsibility. Because we want to eliminate our manual efforts. That's the purpose. You want to do some kind of automation. For that purpose, you are introducing a tool called Jenkins. But I will tell you later. But what is the difference between Jenkins, Hudson, Team City? Why we are going with only Jenkins? Why not with other? Those all things we'll see in regular class. Okay. So how many tools so far we need to maintain? How many tools we want to maintain so far? Portion control tool that is Git. Build tool that is Maven. Continuous integration tool that is called Jenkins. These three we are going to learn in the classes. And I'm going to tell you one more scenario. Let us assume that I have prepared one tool that is called Outlook. I have prepared a product that is called Outlook. I want to sell this product to the MNCs. I want to sell this product to the some companies. I want to sell this product to the companies. What to do now? I need to go to each and every office and I need to install this. I will go to TCS. I will take their system and I will install OS. Right? And I will install dependent softwares. I will install dependent softwares. Dependent softwares is nothing but Java. We need in that mission, we need Tomcat in this mission, we need one database that is Oracle in that mission. And that I'm going to deploy my application that is called Outlook. So that they can start make use of Outlook. This I'm going to do it in one of the employee in TCS. But I want to perform the same activity for all the employees in TCS. How much time it will take for me? How much time it will take for me? If I want to perform these all activities in all the employees in TCS, how much time it will take? 
very huge time am i right or wrong first i need to take their laptop and i need to install the respective operating system and i need to install different softwares like java tomcat and oracle and i need to deploy my application that is called outlook so that they can start make use of outlook in order to send an email and receive an email right every office they are going to use the outlook for sending an emails and for receiving an emails in our regular basis our personal use you are going to use the gmail right the same way in real time we are going to use the outlook if it is one employee then i can go to their office and i can install it but if they have 2000 people very difficult for me to go on install and each and every mission manual and that too i have released outlook 1.0 i don't have a time to upgrade my outlook 2.0 because i want to add some features and i want to add some i want to eliminate the bugs which is existing in the 1.0 right that means i need to invest my time on my product installing doing the marketing and installing doing the installations in the client missions i want to put my efforts in implementing my product because i want to release outlook 2.0 in coming future but if i am going to office and if i am going installing this outlook in all the employees it will take very long time for me i don't want to do that kind of stuff what should i do now i am going to put all these instructions in one file whatever i am going to perform at the client i am going to put all those files in all those instructions in one file that is called proper file whatever the action i am going to do in the tcs employee laptop all these instructions i am going to put it in a docker file and then i am going to build it i'm going to create a docker file and i'm going to build a docker file so that i'm going to get an image whatever i want to perform at the client location those all instructions i have placed in the docker file and i have built the docker file so that i have an image and i will upload this file upload image in docker hub docker hub is nothing but it is just like a google drive that's it we are just uploading the image in the docker hub let us assume that is all instructions i have placed in my docker file and i have built my docker file so that i got an image and i upload this image in the docker hub so what should i do now i am going to intimate to the tcs management stating that boss we have uploaded our image name is outlook 1.0 which was already uploaded in the docker hub you just go and download the image and make use of it so what is this employee is going to do suppose tcs employee one what is going to do he is going to download image from docker hub because they already gave the access to you okay they are going to download the image from the docker hub suppose let us assume that i joined in tcs after that what should i need to do i need to download the image from the docker hub after that you need to run the image so that container will be created in your mission container is nothing but it is just like a folder it is like a folder that's it nothing more he says employee one he is downloading the image from the docker hub and he is running that image so that container is created he can start make use of outlook but he is no way bothered about which os it is required which dependent software is required no those are all the things i already handled in my docker file that file only i built it so that i got an image that image only i have gave it to you you just run that image so that container will be created container is nothing but it is just like a folder for example if you install skype in your local mission if you install skype in your local mission if you go and check in c program files x86 there one folder will be created skype is a folder right when you have a .exe file when you go and click on next 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 
in the background it will create one folder that folder contain all your supporting files for the skype if you go on delete that file if you go on delete that folder see program files x86 skype folder you deleted are you in a position to open skype no the same way here also when you run the image it will create one folder that folder in technical terms they are going to call it as a container that's it which operating system which database which java version all those things will be handled by the docker file only who write down this docker file devops engineer is going to write down this docker file who is responsible for maintaining this docker file devops engineer responsibility to maintain the docker file able to understand or not this is one kind of real time scenario where it will be helpful if you go with the containerization tools that is called docker in regular classes we are going to see what all topics are there in docker and why we need to go for kubernetes what are the disadvantages in docker why we are going for kubernetes this is one real time scenario where which is helpful to go with the docker this we are going to learn in the classes what is the disadvantage with the docker file i will explain with an real time scenario and then we'll move on to kubernetes able to understand or not apart from this we are going to learn ansible also i will tell you one best real time example for ansible ansible is a configuration management tool configuration management tool the name itself it is indicating configurations are going to be managed by the ansible configurations are going to be managed by the ansible able to understand or not configurations are managing what is meant by configurations i will tell you one best real time example for you real time in so many scenarios the application will be successful in test environment and in dev environment but in production they will get an issue let us assume that we are going to have a test server dev server and the test servers test servers will be like this like qa server okay vat server and then t production server and then production server like this we are going to have different kind of servers db servers dow is going to test the test the functional of an application and then they will deliver to the qa server qa team again will test it uat again they are going to test it pre prod also they are going to test it and then they will deploy the application in the production server this is the live application from this server only people will try to access the application but in so many scenarios application will not get any issue in dow in qa in uat in pre prod but once it was deployed in a production server you are going to start getting an issues but why why we are not getting an issue in till pre prod why you are getting an issue in production server because in dow server you are only deploying it in qa server you are only deploying your application in uat you are going to deploy it in pre prod you are deploying it but production server is going to be maintained by the client client is saying that boss you no need to take care of the production server this is the server i can handle it i can manage it you just give the guidance to how to deploy my application and what are the properties which is required those are all the things you just educate me i have a separate team they will take care of it let us assume that we have one application that is called silicon silicon is a big project in tcs silicon people is trying to tell that boss you test the functional of application that's it but in production you don't do any activity i do have a separate team that is silicon team they will do the deployment in a production server at that time i will ask the tcs team stating that boss just give the instructions that's it how to do the deployment what are the property files are required and all let us assume that i gave all the instructions which i did in the pre prod 
but still they are getting an issue at that time what will happen you know client will make a call to our product owner or project manager or a tech lead or tech or tech anybody they will call for a meeting so production support team from silicon is going to engage in that meeting developers are going to join in that call testing team is going to join in that call the ops engineer is going to join in that call and all respect to leads are going to join in that call just in order to identify an issue why we are not getting an issue in production server why we are getting an issue why we are not getting an issue in pre prod why we are getting in production server and later on after so many discussions after so many scenarios they observed it is just a configuration issue like production server they are using java 1.6 by mistake but in pre prod we do have java 1.8 that is a mistake here they are using 1.8 java but production server silicon team they are trying to do the deployment with 1.6 but by mistake this was happened it is just a configuration or not it is just a java version mismatch it's causing an issue but in order to debug that issue you even you can't imagine also how many hours you wasted the ops engineer time is wasted test team dev team product owner product manager scrum master test lead dev ops lead client side right so many members are going to engage and still at the end they just identified that in production we do have 1.6 but in pre prod we do have 1.8 that is the issue in order to eliminate this kind of approach what we are going to do is we are going to write down one playbook playbook is nothing but here we are going to have all configurations i am going to execute this playbook in qa in uat in pre prod in dev if it is success till pre prod i will give this playbook to the customer he is also going to execute the same playbook that means whatever the configurations i have till pre prod the same configurations will be applicable to the production server also rather than giving the information through email or through one format better to give the information through the playbook playbook is nothing but it is just like a file like a ml file in the ml file we are going to have all the configurations the same ml file you are going to execute against to the all the servers till pre prod and the same ml file is going to execute to the production server so if we got an issue in production the same issue will get in pre prod also the same issue will get in uat also because the, all the configurations are same that is the purpose of the configuration management tool we do have a so many configuration management tools like ansible puppet chef salt stack like that we do have a configuration management tool we do have more advantages in the ansible that we are going to discuss in deeper in the regular class so this is one more configuration management tool that we are going to learn by the devops engineer and we do have one more topic that is called cloud area what is meant by cloud anybody what is meant by cloud what is the use of the cloud first of all nowadays everybody is talking about cloud first of all understand that what is the use of it first of all data stored in some different geographical location not uh, physically stored you can save in your laptop right but why we need to save it in some geo geographical all you can store it in your cpu you can store it in some hard drive it will accessible for uh, everyone it's accessible okay what else guys anybody it's, it's a platform which is scalable up to any extent scalable up to any extent okay yeah okay can be accessible from one, any okay okay understand just give me one basic example because in class maybe we do have a freshers also somebody already working in real time 
so they might know bit more uh, the infrastructure is yeah the infrastructure is managed by some other party so we don't need to maintain the infrastructure and then uh, put a cost on maintaining a data center and the other related stuff okay suppose let us assume that i'm going to prepare an application i am a new entrepreneur i am a new entrepreneur i want to implement one product i want to create one application i want to create one sample app at least okay so in order to create that one suppose let us assume that let me give me more clear cut example if you have a land with you like you have a 5 cents or 10 cents but you want to know suppose i want to create one application i want to create one mobile app for it in that mobile app if you give that 5 cents it should display like how many bedrooms you can get in that place how many car parking you can get where kitchen can be suitable which dimensions it is required how much space it is required it should take all my inputs and it should give one beautiful house to me i want to create that application understand my point or not i want to create one app if you just pass some inputs like if you give how much land you have five cents you have you are going to put five cents how many bedrooms you required two bedrooms just mention two if you want one kitchen one balcony one parking area one lawn area if you give all the informations your app should be in a position to give some two to three model houses to you so that you are just going to construct that type that kind of house right in order to create that application i just i have an idea that's it nothing more here i am not sure whether i am going to success or not okay i am not sure whether it is going to be success or not in that case that is just for my interest i am doing it okay let us assume that i have hired two developers for it in order to implement that application i have hired two developers okay so they are going to write down the java files and everything and i have one laptop only one cpu only which is kind of a windows but the requirement is i want to test my application in the windows as well as in the linux i want to test in windows and linux i want to test my application both in both the me operating systems in windows and linux but i have only one cpu i have only one cpu what should i do now first i need to install windows first i need to install windows i need to test my application after that i need to uninstall this windows again i need to install linux in the one cpu and i need to test it am i right or wrong but it is very difficult to each and every time to reinstall and install it very difficult for that i am going to take two cpus for that i have taken two cpus you will understand not for that i have taken two cpus that means two machines we have, we have purchased two machines we have purchased in order to maintain these ones suppose let us assume that for classroom purpose i am telling two machines but suppose if it is a big applications i may require 20 machines i may require 20 machines in order to maintain those 20 machines i need one linux administrator because he is going to maintain these all 20 servers but my budget is very low i am not in a position to recruit one linux administrator and also i am not in a position to purchase 20 machines also because i am not sure whether the my application will be success or not initial stage i am not going to get the money because this is my own product i am not going to get the money 
but at the same time i am not sure how much i am going to success i am not in a position to maintain these 20 machines in my premises to purchase i don't have money to maintain one linux administrator i don't have a money instead of that one what i can do is i can send one request to the amazon or to microsoft like amazon aws amazon web services or azure if you put one request to the amazon stating that boss i need 20 servers with linux operating system with java 1.7 with oracle some kind of versions you are going to get the missions very less span of time it is less than in one minute less than one minute it is just like a rent purpose you are asking them to provide 20 servers with linux with operating system with java for 30 days on rent basis only suppose if i go to bangalore i am going to stay only one month shall i need to buy a flat or shall i can take the rent which place will be preferred suppose right. i am staying only one month in the bangalore shall i take the flat for rent or shall i need to buy it rent per person same thing here also how many servers you need which operating system you need what kind of softwares you want in that server those are all the things just you need to fill up one application form and you need to send to the Amazon. They will create the server and they will give the servers less than one minute. With this, it is very cost effective. Am I right or wrong? You don't need to buy 20 servers. You can use how, much, how, how many days you want that server and you are going to pay only for those days. Right? That's not only that reason this is one of the reason why we need to go for a cloud for demo purpose i am giving only one real time scenario but in regular class we are going to see these kind of scenarios so many scenarios i am going to explain in the real time scenario suppose let us assume that i am going to give one more best example amazon they are going to have one big million sale day something like that they are going to release offers at that time suppose if you have a amazon website today if only 10 lakh people are hitting per day during the sale period more than 10 crore people will hit the server at that time you are going to get some slowness while accessing the application also in order to eliminate that approach what they are going to do they are going to increase the servers also but after four days the traffic will be less again Again, they need to decrease the servers. Right? These are all the things we are going to discuss in real time classes. We are going to see all those things in practical manner. See, so far, as a DevOps engineer, what are the things we are going to learn? First, we need some Linux basics. And then, version control tool Git, we are going to learn. We are going to learn Maven. And we are going to learn Jenkins. We are going to learn Docker. Kubernetes and then AWS and then Ansible and we are going to learn about Tomcat and we are going to learn about Nexus. I will tell you what is the use of the Nexus in classes and then we are going to learn one scripting language that is called Python. Is there any monitoring tool as well? What is that? Is there any monitoring tool as well in this? Monitoring tool like used, but we are dealing with AWS, right? Here we are going to use one kind of a service that is called CloudWatch. That will be helpful, but if you want Nagios, that also I can teach. That's not a big deal. Okay, Nagios I think will be better. Yeah. But nowadays everybody is trying to move to the AWS. In AWS, we are going to obviously learn about AWS CloudWatch. How about Splunk? Splunk no. Okay. Any questions guys? These are all the things we are going to learn in our classes.
So in AWS, and that uh, too, do we have if you class? join the class, you are going to get one more advantage that in Visual Path, we do have one tool. There, we are going to get an access. We are going to have all the softwares related training sessions over there, like Java, DevOps, Administrator, anything. For all those things, we are going to get a free access. But if you if we are not joined the classes and we need to purchase, that is chargeable. But if you join a batch, then it will be free of cost. There we have a facility to learn all the courses on free. That is the one advantage you are going to get it. So do we have tools also in that software package, uh, Chandu? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So uh, Jenkins, Maven and all. Yes, yes, everything. Okay. And AWS, what will be the course? Uh, I mean, it, will it be containing all the related uh, cloud base for Amazon Web Services? Yes, yes. So I can get from I can get the course curriculum from the front office, right? Yes, yes, that's true. Okay. And you can uh, drop your all email IDs to Visual Path Organizer in the uh, chat box, please, so that they can communicate to you about the timings and all. Um. Chandu, I have a question. Uh, yeah. yeah. How many days it will take to cover this course? Maybe I saw in the course content it will take two months, but maybe it will take two more months, right? More than two months. It will be finished in two months only. Sorry? It will be finished in two months. Yeah, only two months. Okay. Yeah. And if no I want to meet uh, in person, if I want to meet in person with you, uh, shall I come to the location, to the address of this region? Yes, yes, you can come. You can come to our office, not sort of problem. When will you be available? I am presently out of station. You can uh, uh, check at reception. They will intimate you. Okay. Any more questions, guys? Yeah, do you provide the support after this course as well or it will be till the classes are not over? What kind of support you need? Let's say if in real time scenario we face any challenge or issue, would you able to help us or you? Yeah, yeah, we, we will definitely help you. That's not a big deal. Will you provide any okay. projects on this, uh, Chindu? Real time yeah, scenario? Yeah, we are going to deal with, we are going to tell with real time projects only. And I will show you one real time project example at the end of the course also. How we have utilized all the tools and how we are implemented. All those things will be covered. How many projects? Only one or? Uh... Only one, one project. One is sufficient. How we are using okay. it, that is most important in that project. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions, guys? And and the support you said you will be providing post course also. So what will be the channel of communication with you? That will intimate in the reception. Because we do have our juniors also and they will also will help you to resolve your issues or not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining the sessions. Please mention your email IDs in the organizer chat box so that they will contact you and they will intimate about the class timings and rest of the things. Thanks guys for joining the session. And how about lab? Uh, Chandu, last question, lab, if I want to do lab, post the 3D class. Yeah, we are, are going to the take lab? the servers from AWS. I will show you how to create an account in AWS and how to take the server from AWS. And you can do all practices for there itself. That will teach in class how to take the servers, how to do the practice and everything. And we will assign some tasks also on day basis. Okay. Shall I come down to uh, uh, the, this institution for the offline lab? 
I want to have. Yes, yes, you can, you can, you can, no problem. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Sanju, have a good day. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining the session. Thanks. See you in next classes. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you.